A metro area father's in jail in the Bahamas this morning after airport security there detained him. Yeah, they found something in his bag that surprised even him, he says. Fox News' Zha Zha Shin is live at KCI. What is it and how do you get out of KCI with it? Gladstone police are still looking for the man who dragged an officer down the road after a traffic stop yesterday. The driver of the van the officers pulled over ran off into some woods after he crashed. Several police departments joined in the search before calling it off a few hours later. People who live in that area were startled by all the commotion. All I heard was squealing tires and a loud bang. It had to have been doing pretty fast, flew through the yard, hit railroad ties, trash cans, a grill, and sent everything flying when it hit in the process. This morning, Gladstone police say they know who the man is and they're going to issue an arrest warrant for him. The officer who was dragged is okay this morning. He only has some minor bruises and scrapes. So uh, Harry Potter uh, on its opening weekend did over a billion dollars worldwide. Can you believe that? 168 million here in America. Uh, oh yeah. my god! I went and saw it last night. It was pretty it's, good. It's pretty good. Pretty intense. Wow. Even if you haven't followed all the backstory, mm -hmm. it, the special effects are great. He wants to tell you what happens at the end, Don? No, I've got about seven of those to catch up okay. on. Okay. <laughs> 782 better, better now. Better get busy. Lawmakers may be near a deal now to solve the debt limit crisis. Only a short-term deal, though, and Congress doesn't have much time to work it out. Doug Guzader has more from Washington. Good morning. 30 years after the Hyatt Skywalk collapse, and a group is still working on setting up a permanent memorial. The Skywalk Memorial Foundation unveiled their new proposed Four memorial, more. which includes a 36-foot diameter illuminated by fiber optic lights. We identify the names of all 114 victims who died that night will be listed under the sculpture. They had a groundbreaking ceremony yesterday and released some doves. The memorial organizers say now is the time to build this memorial. If we don't do this now, I can assure you nobody else is going to do it. They need about $800,000 for the memorial. They have about half of it. Organizers hope to have it finished by next summer. Floodwaters from the Missouri River have damaged several roads and highways. The water washed away parts of the roads, including an exit ramp off I-29 onto Highway 2 up near Sydney, Iowa. An engineer says the water washed away some of the dirt that helped support the overpasses. And that means road crews are going to have a lot of work to do once the water goes down. I mean, this will all have to be inspected. Our engineers will have to come down and, and everything is going to have to be possibly redone. But I mean, this is way down the line in the future. Right now, officials don't really know how long it will take them to repair the roads. They don't have a timetable on reopening the highway either. Northbound I-29 is still closed this morning, starting near Rockport, Missouri. A U.S. senator wants airlines to refund you the passengers for baggage fees if your luggage doesn't even arrive on time. Charles Schumer from New York sending a letter to all major airlines requesting that they refund your baggage fee for lost and delayed luggage. If they don't do it on their own, he plans to introduce legislation that would force them to. Next month, a new rule goes into effect that requires airlines to reimburse baggage fees if luggage is lost forever. Grandpa and grandma may be the safest drivers when kids are in the car. New research shows there are fewer injuries when grandparents are driving compared with when parents are driving. Researchers think grandparents are extra cautious when driving their grandkids. The studies published in the journal Pediatrics. So uh, Leslie and I did something fun on Friday. We uh, got on the Harley and went up to Knuckleheads in the East Bottoms. Tell me about that. And uh, it was a lot of fun. I think I need a few tattoos, though, to kind of fit in with some of the people up there. Oh, I thought you were going to say i got to have a few tattoos to match Leslie. But... <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to tell anybody, Hello. Don. Stop needling me. All right, let's get a check on power traffic. Here's Nick. We're inside the bookstore recreation area of the Missouri Southern State University, and this is where thousands of volunteers have been streaming in to sign up to volunteer to help with the people here in Joplin. People from all over the country have been streaming in since Sunday night, Monday morning. First, they sign in to be a volunteer. They fill out some paperwork talk, talking about their skill set, what they have to offer, some whatever equipment they may have, uh, maybe to clear debris, chainsaws, that sort of thing. Then they come over to this area where they are, do a short one to two minute interview 
These people with AmeriCorps volunteers help place them in the proper jobs. Andy Zern is here from Branson, Missouri. He's a framer by trade. Why did you come to volunteer, Andy? I, I've got all the tools we need. I just came to help out. You know, I'm doing easy to be done, so. Have you been to the uh, area that's been devastated? Nope, haven't even seen it yet, so. We'll Surely see. you've seen it on TV. What are you hoping to do down there? Uh, clean up, just do whatever, you know, to help wherever they need me. You know, I got chainsaws and whatever, so just uh, what, wherever they need me, you know. Well, good luck. Be safe. All right, thanks. AmeriCorps does have a volunteer help center hotline that you can call, but they say that hotline has been so overwhelmed, they prefer that you come down here in person. Reporting from Joplin, Mark Alford, Fox 4 News, working for you. Well, this Sunday is the 30th anniversary of the Hyatt Regency Skywalk collapse. 114 people died that day. 200 got hurt. The tragedy really put Kansas City in the national spotlight. Brent Wright lost both his mother and stepfather that night. Now he's working to honor those lives that were lost 30 years ago. Good to have you with us, Brent. Thank you for having me. You still remember where you were 30 years ago when you heard the news? I do. I was, uh, I was 17 years old at the time. I had just graduated high school and was headed off to, to KU to start college. And uh, my uh, sister and I were working out at Oak Park Mall and got a call from my father and, and went back home. And he's the one who, who gave us the news. Do you ever get over something like that? You know, I don't think you ever forget those sorts of things, but I, I do think with time, uh, at least for me, you tend to kind of remember the good things uh, and focus less and less on, on the difficult things. It's been 30 years since this happened. You're looking at file footage from inside the High Regency. Uh, not much has changed on the interior there. They, they don't have the skywalk on the top floor anymore on the third level. You've been inside the High Regency since. Is it hard for you to go back in there? You know, I, I have been there, uh, and the first time I went back in, I know it was difficult just knowing what had happened, and, and uh, uh, but, but really, I think over time, uh, even the things like that get a little bit easier. Um, we've had meetings with representatives from the High Corporation uh, there, and they've been very gracious and helpful in our effort. It is amazing how the management is so gracious about it. They don't really want to talk about it, but they understand that it's still tough for you guys. They do. You know, this is, um, for better or worse, a part of Kansas City's history. It's one of the most significant events, I think, that's occurred um, in, in this city. And so it, they understand, and, and, and many of the people we've, we've discussed this with understand that we need to recognize and remember those events. So how are you doing that? You're building a memorial not far from the Hyatt, right? We are. Uh, we have gone through a, a long uh, process, but now the memorial will be built uh, in Hospital Hill Park, which is just off the corner of 22nd and Gillum. Uh, we've got uh, a design, uh, we've hired an architect, uh, we've gone through Parks and Rec approval, uh, approval from the Arts Commission. And Why has it taken so long, 30 years, to get this done? It's a good question. Uh, in the beginning, we thought this might be easy. Uh, we've learned that these things take a long time. Um, you know, you've got to go through all sorts of approvals, you've got to uh, come up with different designs. Uh, we most recently have undertaken a search for an artist, and then you have to work on what the art piece will look like. Uh, and now we're in the final phase, uh, fundraising, to, to make it happen. All right, Sunday is the uh, anniversary of this tragedy. What is planned for Sunday? What will you be doing? Well, there'll be, there'll be two events. There's one at uh, 1230 at the park itself in Hospital Hill Park. There'll be a, a celebration of life. It's a time to remember and reflect on the, the events and those who were injured and lost their lives and, and remember the rescue workers. Uh, following that, there's another event uh, at the library, uh, the main library downtown, Kansas City Library, uh, at 2 o'clock. Uh, the Kansas City Star is releasing a, a book remembering these events, and there will be a panel discussion there at that time. Brent, thank you so much. Thank you so much really for having us. I appreciate you being part of our community. Stephan?